All right, what's up, guys? Today we're gonna be going my over my 2024 Indy 500 expectations. But before we dive into that, I feel like I owe some thank yous for my last video. Um, I just want to say thank you to all the people that have watched it, liked it, commented on it. I've been trying to reply or heart or do something to show you that I saw your comment on every comment. Probably after this video, I'm gonna go check and see if I get any more. On this video, I'm gonna do my best to reply or heart or like every comment that I see. Um, it really means a lot to me when you leave a comment or you like. And thank you to the people that subscribed. When I uploaded that video, we had 399 subscribers and we're up to 400, and I believe it's 72 right now. No, 77. I just looked at my MacBook. Yes, it is 477 subscribers. So, wow. I mean, that means the world to me. I also want to go ahead and say a big thank you to my mom for filming. She did a phenomenal job. Um, I want to say thank you to the IMS Yellow Shirt People security guards for letting me move around and let me being able to do those interviews and letting me get those opportunities to do that. I want to say thank you to the drivers for stopping and giving me their time in an interview. And I want to say thank you to um, the fans, you know, just thank you in general. And um, thank you to my cousin Evan who posted it for me on his uh, story. I also posted it. Just thank you to all my friends and everything. The support I've been getting has been tremendous, and I genuinely just want to say thank you. Okay, I got that out of the way. Let's move on to my expectations. So, I think the biggest question mark heading into this month of May is going to be Team Penske. Um, they obviously will be running three cars. They're going to have Joseph Newgard and Scott McLaughlin and Will Power this year. I mean, obviously with the Push the Pass scandal, that could be a whole video on itself. I'm going to be really interested to see how they get. I think Will Powers probably going to be their biggest shot at winning this year because he's gotten the least amount of damage from the penalty. I think Newgarden's going to be hurting this month, and I think Scott McLaughlin will have a Scott McLaughlin type 500, probably get overhyped the whole week and run 10 through 15 the whole race. I think Newgarden could be back there and struggle, and I expect Will Power to be in the top 10 fighting for it all day. Second team, we're going to have Chip Ganassi with a five-car entry, the number four of Kip Simpson, the number eight of Linus Lundquist, the number nine of Scott Dixon, number 10 of Alex Pillow, and the number 11 of Marcus Armstrong. I expect Ganassi's two front runners are going to be the nine of Scott Dixon and the 10 of Alex Pillow, specifically the 10 of Alex Pillow. I think that is really Ganassi's main shot at winning the race. I mean, Linus Lundquist could surprise you. I am see how Armstrong gets on his first oval ever, so be that's cool. And Kiffit Simpson, you know, he's been struggling this year. I mean, he's a rookie. He got like 13th in the Indy Next Championship last year. He's really, I mean, let's face it, if his dad didn't have all that money, would he be an IndyCar? No. But he's got a Ganassi ride, and he's one of the five guys heading in to what I will think will probably be the strongest team this month. But, yeah, I think Alex Pillow in the number 10 is going to be really tough. Now let's move on to Andretti Global. They have a three-car. They have, sorry, I just spun my chair there. They have three, they have four cars, Three of their full-time guys, and then they're adding a fourth car for Marco Andretti. They have the number 26 of Colton Herta, the number 27 of Kyle Kirkwood, the number 28 of Marcus Erickson, their full-time guys, and the number 98 of Marco Andretti. I think Marcus Erickson's probably going to be their best shot at winning the race from the last two years. You know, being a front runner should be a back-to-back -back 500 winner, should have won the last two races in the number 8 Ganassi car. But this year, he finds himself in the 28 Andretti car, and I expect him to be fighting for the win. I have him as definitely a front runner. I think Colton Hurd and Kyle Kirkwood are huge spoilers for the race. They could easily be competitive. And Andretti could easily win this race. Easy. And then Marco Andretti, I don't expect to do much. I mean, when he was younger, he could get the P4s and the P3s in the Indy 500. But I just don't see that anymore from Marco. I don't see him having the best day. But you never know. I expect Erickson to be their main contender for the win. Fourth team I'm going to go over is Aaron McLaren. They are running four cars. They have three full-time cars, and then they have their one-off entry, obviously, with Kyle Larson. So they have the five of Pato Award and the seven of Alexander Rossi. Those two are, like, their main two guys this year. And then they have six. In the sixth car, they have Kyle Mylott for the rest of the season. That's going to be Tierra Porsche, but he did not get cleared on his oval test to run the 500. So they went with Kyle Mylott, who did St. Pete in the Thermal Club, 
and the Indy Open test with him. So Kyle will be in the six. And then in the number 17, Kyle Larson, obviously from Hendrick um, Motorsports over at NASCAR. It's a combined effort on both those parties. I think McLaren's theoretically best shot is either Alexander Rossi or Pato Award. I think if Pato Award can keep his head, Pato Award is McLaren's front runner for the win. But Rossi, in recent history, in the past few years, has kept his head at Indy. So I expect Rossi to be probably McLaren's best shot. I would say Kyle Larson, but if he keeps coming back and does this race the next two, three years, I would say Kyle Larson. But I'm not ready to put Kyle Larson there yet. It'd be interesting that he gets on. And then Kyle Mylott, I think he's got a tough task ahead of him. I think he'll have no trouble getting in the field, but I'm interested to see how Kyle Mylott gets on with the number six, Aaron McLaren. We'll see. All right, now I'm going to go to A.J. Foyt, who could very well be a huge spoiler this month. They are a two-car entry with the number 14 is Santino Ferrucci and the 41 is Stingray Rob. I expect Santino Ferrucci and the 14 crew to get on right away and be super quick. I think they'll be one of the front runners and one of the teams that's going to be really, really, really hard to beat. Stingray Rob, on the other hand, he, he, he scares me. I think, I mean, last year he qualified 32nd for the race. I'll be interested to see how he gets on. You just never know. I mean, I don't know. I expect the 14 to be strong and the 41 to be about mid-pack. So, be interesting to see. All right, and my prediction, the weakest team coming this month, we're going to go into Dale Coyne. There are two-car entry with the number 18, Nolan Siegel, and the 51, Catherine Legg. Um, I really don't know why Jack Harvey isn't in the 18 for this race because Nolan Siegel and Indy Next driver, he's just coming up. But obviously, Coyne went with him, which I think is a mistake. I think they should have gone with Harvey and Catherine Legg, but that's just me. I do think either Nolan Siegel or Catherine Lake will get bumped, but that's with no practice running. I do expect Coin to be on the back foot. And I, I don't I don't even think really theoretically they have a strong shot. I just don't see much from this team. Ed Carpenter Racing, they have Ed Carpenter in the twenty, Renus VK in the twenty one, and Christopher Rasuman in the thirty three. I mean, I expect this team to be up there for qualifying, but probably not so much the race. I mean, I think Ed Carpenter and Renus VK could play a factor in the poll. I'm going to see how Christopher Rasterman gets on. I expect him to be back there. I don't, I haven't been too impressed with him this year, so we'll see how he gets on. I think Renus VK could easily get the poll this year. And same with Ed Carpenter. I think Carpenter will qualify well, but probably not race too well. And VK, you know, if he qualifies well and keeps his head, he could be a contender, but I don't know. I just expect this team to be a strong qualifying team, but not too good in the race. All right, let's go on to Humco's Hume, Hollinger Racing. Um, sorry if I said that wrong. Humco's Racing, Humco's Hollinger Racing. They have a two-car entry: the number seventy-seven of Roman Grosjean and the seventy-eight of Augusta Canapino. Uh, not Augustine, Augustine Canapino. Sorry, I'm fumbling some of these names. Um, Roman Grosjean crashed out of both his five hundreds, and Augustine Canapino, a rookie last year, crashed out of his five hundred. I expect these guys to be on pace with each other. I don't expect one to be that far ahead of each other. I don't know what to expect from these two, quite frankly. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what, how they get on, but yeah, I'll expect them to be more towards the back, and I don't think any of them will be in bump trouble, but you never know. Maybe one of them will go to the last chance um, qualifiers, but I don't expect I don't expect nothing much from Humco's Hollander Racing. All right, and now we have Meyer Shank Racing, the 2021 Indy 500 winners with Elio Castroneves. And in the 06 machine, they have Elio. In the 60, Felix Rosenquist. And in the 66, they have Tom Blomquist. Tom Blomquist is actually running the Elio 2021 500 chassis. I got that. Imp- Sorry, I got that information from David Land. Um, yeah, I I would expect Felix and Elio to be at the front. I expect Tom Blomquist to struggle as he's done this year so far. So Elio and Tom, I mean Elio and Rosenquist, I expect to be at the front. I think Rosenquist could be a pole contender, and I'll be interested to see how Helio does in the race. But I expect Helio to be their main shot. I think Felix might get into some trouble in the race as he normally does, but I expect Felix to be very strong in qualifying. Okay, Ray Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing, last year not good at all. Ended up seeing Graham Ray Hall get bumped. They are running four cars this year, and the 15 Graham Ray Hall and the 30 Pietro Fittipaldi and the 45 Christian Lungard, and then the 75 Takuma Sato. I expect this team, since they brought Sato on for the 500 only, 
I expect them to be strong. I think they'll be better. I don't think any of them will have any bump day drama. I'm expecting, I don't think they'll be uh, winning the race, but I think they'll be mid-pack all race, and I think they'll have a much better performance. I expect Takuma Sato to be their top guy. He's a one-off guy. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would say Sato could be in the top 10 at the end of the day, but definitely not expecting too much from Ray Hall at Manigan Racing. And then the last team to cover, we have Dreyer Reimbolt, uh, also with Acoustic Motorsports. They're running two cars, the number 23 of uh, Ryan Hunter Ray and the 24 of Connor Daly. Um, I expect Connor Daly to be the front runner. I think Connor Daly is going to have a really good day. I think Ryan Hunter Ray is going to kind of have the race he did last year, kind of just quiet and did nothing. This will probably be Ryan's, honestly, probably his last go at the race. I think Daly is going to take this opportunity and try and get full time again. So I expect Hunter Ray to be going for it this year. And I'll be interested to see what Hunter Ray does, but definitely interested to see. So that is the 34 cars and drivers that I have gone over. I'm really excited for the 2024 Indy 500. There was supposed to be a 35th entry in Able Motorsports, but they pulled the plug last minute. So I guess you could say we have our first bump already over with, with Able Motorsports and R.C. Anderson failing to come. So now we have one last um, bump to go, I guess you could say. 34 cars. Practice starts tomorrow. I plan to make a practice review video every day. Thursday's going to be tough, but I think I can do it. I would like to go to qualifying Saturday and Sunday, and I'm going to carb day. Hopefully get good interviews there. We'll go to the race. Probably not going to get interviews. So, yeah. I hope I plan to really be posting the next two weeks every day for the Indy 500. Indy 500 content only on this channel. You can get Indy 500 content from me and David Land every day. I like to say David Land is probably better as of right now because he gets to go to the track and see everything. But if you want good Indy 500 content, David Land and Forever Flame racing reviews. So um, thank you. Make sure to subscribe if you want. Good IndyCar content, and I will have Formula One content after the month of May. So if you want good racing and up-and-coming YouTuber content, click subscribe. Get on board right now. I'm aiming for 500 subscribers by the end of the month for the Indy 500, 500 for Indy. And I think we can do that. Hit subscribe, and see ya.